All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Face the Truth. Uh, it feels like it's been, like, forever since I've done one of these, even though it's been uh, a little over a week. I don't know why. It's been a long week. Um, and uh, I'm very tired. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. I'm really excited about this. I'm taking a break uh, from a, an illustration job that I'm working on right now um, that's been exhausting me. Um, but that's part of the part of the job. And, uh, but it's really nice to be able to, to take a break like this and talk with another awesome artist that I respect greatly. Um, I first met this artist, I think 2012 or 2013 or something like that. Um, and uh, just immediately blown away by his work. And one thing I want to get into when we start talking, when I, when I start uh, uh, ending this uh, terribly long intro when we actually can talk, um, is one thing that always impressed me about this guy is his sense of aesthetics. And that's really what I, one thing I want to get into because um, he obviously has a very strong um, passion and drive for quality. And I see that in his work every single time I see him do something. So I have a lot of respect for this guy. He's super awesome. So everyone, please welcome Marvin Lorenz. <laughs> So welcome, Thanks, my friend. How are you doing? What a great introduction. Thanks. <laughs> I'm great. Well, right. <laughs> Good, man. Oh, oh, like I said, I'm super exhausted. It's been a crazy, uh, crazy week. Um, I got, I actually got attacked by a dog this week. Um, wow. It was just, yeah, it was a terrible accident. It was just misunderstanding between me and the dog. <laughs> and I got my wrist, my drawing arm bit. Um, and so it kind of put a damper on my deadlines and that sort of a thing. Um, that sucks. Yeah. How, how bad is it? How bad is the injury? Uh, it's, it's just, um, it's just one, I got one puncture, uh, in the wrist. It was like a number two pencil, like stabbing my wrist basically. Oh, okay. Um, it went deep, but it luckily it didn't damage anything like permanently, but oh, okay. it's been one of those, like I'm on all kinds of antibiotics right now. So I'm like kind of drowsy and, um, <laughs> And it was, it's just, it's an unfortunate thing uh, just because, you know, I know it wasn't anyone's fault really. It was just kind of, well, that happened, <laughs> you know, it was scary. I won't, I won't lie. It was a little yeah, flaky. I've never scary. been bit by yeah. a dog before. Um, but, uh, but that on top of deadlines, you know, like trying to, and then trying to, I had to go to the hospital and then trying to, you know, I've got this deadline right now that's really been weighing me down and then this happens so it's like ah so but that's the way it goes sometimes life throws you curveballs and um you got to eat lemons wait that's not what it's that's not yeah. that. <laughs> um, something, something similar right <laughs> some, something about lemons yeah <laughs> make some lemon juice um yeah but anyway how, how are you doing man i'm doing great um you know a couple of uh, smaller commissions are you know going right now and uh, but first and foremost, I try to, you know, recover from all the things are, that are going around this year. Uh, it's really been, you know, difficult, uh, stressful at times, uh, anxieties, you know, all mm. this kind of weird thing going on. Um, and right now I, I try to, you know, get back to painting really and also attacking the larger canvases again. Um, I really miss, you know, uh, yeah, putting that effort into it and, uh, you know, uh, painting more on the larger sc uh, scales. So yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to do now. In fact, I uh, right now I have a large canvas behind me. Uh, actually, I wanted to you know clean up my studio, but then I realized now it's too messy, <laughs> way too messy. I just you know put a canvas behind me yeah. so I have a neutral background. Um, yeah. But it's one of the canvases I'm working on. It's uh, four and a half to five feet, and that's um, awesome. yeah, that's a, a nice size for me to work on right now. And uh, I want to continue the, the series I started um, three years ago about, uh, you know, the John Lennon that you shared uh, on your page on Instagram. Uh, that was the second piece of the series. And I, you know, I want to continue. I want to continue that and, uh, you know, just keep pushing that. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. yeah. Be beautiful work, by the way, man. Oh, um, yeah, it's funny, too. Speaking of it, I, I, it's so funny. I. I shared that that piece on my Instagram to promote that I was going to talk with you. 
And I, I was in trouble, right? <laughs> well, I was surprised by just the, the the people that just can't get out of their own asses. It's like, <laughs> what is going on with this world where you just what we have to all just walk on eggshells now for the rest of our lives? Like, you can't do anything without upsetting someone. It's ridiculous. He did this beautiful painting of John Lennon, um, and people people were upset about it. They have to you know complain about it. It's like, do you not understand? Like, do you not get that this is, you know, there's something beautiful about this. Yeah. It's like, it's like, um, it's the same thing with, you know, uh, you, you can't do a painting of Hitler because oh. like you'll, you'll get blocked for life from Facebook or whatever else. It's like, well, yeah. why not? Why can't you do it? Just because you do a painting yeah. of someone doesn't mean you, you glorify or support oh. them. Oh. I've, I've done paintings of Saddam Hussein. Does that mean I support all the things he did or whatever? You know, it's like, it's ridiculous. I, I just don't understand that, and and uh, your painting was part of what's so moving about that painting, is the fact that it's 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 like this eerie moment where the guy that yeah. killed him is in the the picture with him, yeah. Like that's a it's a dark but also beautiful. Like there's there's something about that that's powerful, you know. People yeah. just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I really. Um... You know, that was something that uh, caught my attention. I actually stumbled upon this uh, reference by accident. Um, actually, I wanted just to paint John Lennon. Um, uh, but, you know, somehow this this uh, photo, you know, appeared on the Internet and uh, it, it just caught my attention. And, I, you know, I saved it at first, but I, I haven't seen it before, I think. Uh, you know, I, I grew up and I knew that John Lennon was shot at one point in, in, in the past. But uh, as soon as I saw that picture, it just followed me over a couple of weeks and I couldn't get it out of my head. So the only thing that I knew was, you know, to get it kind of or deal with it in a way was to paint it, actually. And I just didn't want to paint it on, on a small scale and, you know, just uh, translate what I see, but really interpret it and doing this on the on the larger scale. Like I said, it's, it's the, the four and a half to five feet um, painting. And in reality, it, it uh, kind of overwhelms you in a way. Like uh, also when I painted it, I really had difficulties, you know, uh, with creating this mood uh, that goes mm -hmm. all over the place, the atmosphere, the colors and stuff. And I also had a difficult time painting, uh, you know, that Chapman guy uh, in the background. I, you know, wanted to kept, keep him there and really be more blurry and, and you know, set him set him away in a in a kind of sense. So I, I yeah. try to really put the focus on John first and foremost. And this is really part of a series and it's still in process um, and it's evolving. Um, there are many more, you know, important figures, uh, icons, uh, if you will, uh, that, that I'm working on right now and they will follow. Um, but right. uh, yeah, that that's a special piece to me. And it was really great that uh, it somehow, you know, interested you as well. So that you shared it um, for you know for people to see um, because it's really a piece for me as well. Yeah, no, I mean I love that painting. I'm a oh, big fan thanks. of of John Lennon. Imagine is like basically one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah. Um, and the painting is, and and again, this goes back to the aesthetics thing I said in, in the intro is, you know, there are. There are a lot of artists out there. I mean, it's insane, especially it's it's interesting now with Instagram. I mean, I don't know about you, but every single time I go on Instagram, I see another artist that's just awesome. I'm like, man, there's so many amazing yeah. artists out there. <laughs> um, and, you know, but there's for me personally, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm very hard on myself. I hardly like anything that I do. I'm always trying to push myself and, and take myself to, to higher levels if I can. Um and there's nothing worse than looking back at something that, you know, that's published and it's out there and you're just like, oh, that's so bad. And like, you know, like it's it's something that I personally deal with. So when I see certain artists where I look at their work and I'm like, man, that is some serious aesthetics. And what I mean by that is you're not just painting. You're not just like drawing and painting. You, like you're putting a lot of thought and care into how it's presented um, the style and the, the atmosphere, there's a lot of atmosphere in your work. I really enjoy the, the sort of depth that you're getting with acrylics, 
um, sort of like, you know, very thin washes in certain areas and, you know, just little textures and you, there's something about that. So I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about your approach aesthetically, like, because you obviously have style and something that you're going towards with your work. Yeah. Um, so I have to get really, you know, back in, in time, uh, for this, uh, I, when I started, uh, you know, getting my first uh, kind of, you know, set of colors, uh, it was a watercolor palette, really, really small. Um, it was back in 2008, I guess. And uh, it was just my first introduction, really painting before I, I always, I, I was always drawing and sketching. But um, at that point, I really thought about, okay, this is so new. It's, it's opening doors in, in lots of ways. Um, and into a lot of directions. Um, and, you know, from there with watercolors, I, uh, you know, I, I try to uh, get, you know, every painting and, and be more, you know, um, I try to, to get better with each painting. That's what I, yeah. what I can say. Um, and from there, you know, just uh, I, I introduced later uh, opaque paint like acrylics or gouache. And I realized that uh, the the all the work that I put into watercolors before, and uh, you were a big influence, by the way, um, especially when I just started figuring out painting, um, I stumbled upon your your page. Uh, back then, it was uh, the blog days, um, oh, yeah. and yeah, and I've seen your work there, and I was just mesmerized by your quality as well. You had all these different kind of uh, mediums that you were using, acrylics, gouache, watercolor, digital uh, oils, you, you did everything. And I always admired, you know, artists who are not really limited to one technique or mm. one perception of things um, or one style, but, you know, who just can do anything. And you were one of those guys I, I really look up to. And um, so you, you set some sparkle there and I, you know, try to, to get really into watercolors and and through watercolors i slowly moved to acrylics at one point and um yeah the thing with watercolors is really uh if i can uh, get into that a little um yeah please the, the difficult thing is that you basically leave the white of the page to be your brightest white like highlights in the eyes for example i try to really leave them out from the very beginning so you have to have a plan before you start um, and mm -hmm. I did so many hundreds of bad watercolors till, you know, I slowly <laughs> get myself into more decent ones over the years. And uh, at one point I thought, okay, now I, I think I somehow have a clue how this is working. And then I tried to uh, do paintings more with opaque color. And then I realized, wow, I can, I can do so much more now that I can put actual white paint onto something and I had so so many things um, ahead of me all, all of a sudden and so many doors opened at that moment that I really appreciated the the process with it and it really calmed me down I could um, you know uh, how can I say I could I could stretch the whole process uh, of acrylics over days before I always you know I, I just did one watercolor in in one rush actually uh, mm -hmm. always I, I yeah. never back to a, a watercolor, um, but uh, yeah, with acrylics, I really enjoyed that this uh, luxury that I had, that I could really, you know, put paint on and correct things and created a certain mood that I couldn't translate with a, uh, with watercolor. So that's really what you know opened my eyes in some way. And there were lots of lots of inspirations I got from different artists. Um, it's. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just this fun thing, and I, especially when you talk about the aesthetics, um, I think that just goes back to you know my personal thinking of what kind of mood uh, there should be in a painting. It's really subjective, I guess, mm -hmm. um, and especially on on larger scale, you tend to get really into the details. But I didn't want that. I actually want to really embrace you know, transitions and forms and shapes and, and color and harmony and balancing all of that out, um, but not really getting too precise at one point. It's all kind of abstract. If you stand in front of those larger images, it's kind of abstract in a way if you stand really close. So, yeah. No, that's the kind of stuff I love. That's um, And you do that so well. Um, 
You know, Thanks. one of the things too that I that I really enjoy that I notice is that, you know, like I do a lot of teaching. I've done it for a while now, and and uh, one of the things that comes up on a regular basis is, you know, like someone's painting. You know, the drawing will be good, um, and you know, it's a very good start. But there's always something where it looks flat. And it's usually when you have that issue, it's a value issue. The the, the values yeah. aren't, um, um, you know, dark enough or bright enough or whatever. And so uh, that's one thing I'm always saying, like, like this is really good. But if you push the dark, the values a little darker, it's going to start popping. And then this, you know, and then you're going to have to come now. You, now you realize how how these values don't work anymore because you you raise, you know, once you put the the correct value, then you realize the surrounding values are wrong. Um, but one thing that I really like about some of your paintings, and it's something that um, I just like in general when when artists do this, is you you'll have like you'll choose like a value range that you know you'll you choose like okay, I'm not gonna get any darker than this. This is gonna be my darkest dark, even though it's if you put black next to it, it would look so faint next to the black. Yeah. So you choose like this value range and you stay in this nice value range where like the Marilyn Monroe piece, for example. Um, I love that painting. It's so subtle and soft, but it's very there's a lot of control. And you chose like, hey, this I'm gonna keep my values in this kind of a uh, range. Now, was that your goal, for example, before you started that painting, or is that something as you were working, you were like, oh, I kind of like this. I'm going to keep it here. Uh, I'm just curious because it's a really – that's one of the things that to me that's so stunning about that one. Um, and I believe you sort of did it in your um, Post Malone piece as well. Very, yeah. very yeah. like low value range. Uh, but it's controlled. You still have enough value where it doesn't look flat. That's the yeah. point I was trying to make was that – I see people try to do that or they accidentally do that. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> no, that's really uh, something I was looking for, actually. And also the, the Marilyn Monroe piece was my first, you know, bigger painting. And also with acrylics, it was really my kind of one of the first introductions to the medium. So I wanted right away, I, I saw the opportunities that acrylics had and I wanted to push it really, really far. Um you know, in in the end, I you know kind of got the look that I, I that I wanted to create, um, but it's really yeah the the palette was really really I mean close. We are really talking just about a few you know um, steps from the value scale. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't I didn't make any plans for that actually, but uh, you know I just took my time to mix the colors right before I started and. The process for the Marilyn was taking like, I don't know, I, I stopped painting on it and I took some breaks. You know, the whole process was stretched over one year, I guess. So once in a while I painted more on it and then another time I came back and put more into it. Um, yeah, so that was really, uh, that was a really fun, fun challenge and I really learned a lot uh, with that. But um, right now, actually, I'm uh, talking about the Marilyn. Um, I actually revisited the, the theme of her because that uh, photo that I used there um, was, uh, you know, not really one of those photos uh, taken of her just before her death. Um, I found another picture um, of her on the beach uh, and she had really those, you know, natural uh, hairs and, and makeup, it really, really... A little makeup on and, and she had this just beautiful beautiful look on her face and right now I'm actually getting back to painting her again um, and maybe I put it you know just uh, into the series as well uh, painting her on the same size this time uh, like the John Lennon and um, getting also back into this color harmony thing uh, that you were mentioning yeah, but that's really something I was looking for and I strive for that. And yeah, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. No, it's awesome, man. Um, I am blanking on this artist's name right now. Perhaps you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, gosh, I believe in the 70s or so. Um, I think his name starts with a G, his last name perhaps. Um, oh, uh, Gottfried Hellenwein maybe? Oh, no, 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 no. The Austrian? He's awesome. No, he's Artist. awesome. Yeah, uh, that, that's not who I mean. Um, 
Oh, this is gonna drive me nuts. I did see this artist that I'm, t- I'm thinking of when I was in Austria. He did. There was a few of his pieces in the museum there. Yeah. I um, missed them. <laughs> oh gosh, what's what's his name? Anyways, oh man, this is gonna drive me crazy. Um, he does. So he's he's known. I think most recently he was doing like these giant color paintings with just crazy kind of colors. But then he'd take a squeegee and he would do like these kind of crazy blends with a squeegee. Oh, uh, Gerhard Richter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's Gerhard what Richter. In yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Ger- yeah. yeah. So but, he's so, a big influence. On okay. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Stuff. Yeah. Gottfried yeah. Helmwein, Gerhard Richter, Sebastian Krüger. Those are the guys that I really look up yeah. to. I mean. Yeah, it can't get Richter any better. Is like so. So there's a few paintings that he, that are here in the Chicago Art Museum that I just wow. oh my gosh, I, I your stuff kind of reminds me of it a little bit because it's it's I've been inspired to try something like it, but I haven't had the time to do it yet. But I, where he he paints like a giant, like the one here in Chicago that I'm thinking of, the painting is like. I would say it looks like it's at least ten feet tall, at least. Wow. But like it looks like a giant old kind of sepia photograph. Um, and what's really cool about it is everything is painted so soft and out of focus. But like, it's like you step back from it, it looks super, super real. But when you walk up, it's just paint. Like it's hard. <laughs> it doesn't look like some of it doesn't even really look that blended it's like it's yeah. kind of it's kind of amazing. That's that's what I love about it is when you get up to the painting, you're like, wow, that's just some light brown going into some black there. It looks so easy, but then when you step back, it's like, whoa, how do you do that? It's just awesome. <laughs> um, but that's one thing, you know. I think that's one thing that that I think you can appreciate, and it, you know, it's one thing about painting that's so seductive is yeah. like, you know. People like even with digital painting, like people will, will you know, you you can get away with a lot more digitally because you can you can work faster and you can zoom in and you can really refine things and and when you pull back it looks super super tight. But but still, even painting digitally, like you can zoom in on something and you can see like oh that's just a few brush strokes, but like when it when you see it at at the size that you want to show people, it looks super real. And uh, but that's one of the things about painting that I think is like I said, seductive, like it really, for me anyways, you know, like I, there's nothing more exciting than, um, I don't know if you've gotten to see John Singer Sargent paintings up close, but like yeah. when, when you see those up close, I got and, to see the, yeah, oh, there's there like was a, a few brush strokes. In, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was an exhibition in London a, a few years ago. Um, actually I, I visited two exhibitions, one of his watercolors and one uh, in the national portrait gallery in London. And yeah. uh, they had these huge paintings of his. I think that was a that was a tour they did. I think they came to the Metropolitan Museum as well uh, in New York. Um, and I I just stood in front of them and I you know I just couldn't believe how abstract they are when you yeah. get up close. And then you step back and all it all makes sense. Like it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know so I was <laughs> I was in the middle of these oil commissions um, a few years back. I did four or five. I did five paintings. It was for a university. It was a really cool job because these portraits are going to like hang in this university for forever. You know, it's kind of a cool thing. And, and I was like, God, this is kind of cool, you know. Um, and so I really, you know, tried my best to do like the best paintings I could, um, having to still stick with what they, you know, there's still a lot of rules. It's not like I can just kind of be artsy, you know, I got to kind of got to do, I got to be a good boy when I paint, you know. Uh, but I remember spending hours just rendering the suit jackets, um, just every crease. And, and then it's not, then, then, you know, when you, when you're rendering the creases, then you have to, where the black or the darkest dark is meeting the next, that's got to get soft and you got to get in there. It's, everything's going to be soft. And, and like, and then when you step back, oh, okay, that's looking pretty real. You know, I'm, I'm putting all this work into it. Then I go to the, to the exhibit, this John Singer Sergeant j- exhibit in Chicago. And, I remember just being like, oh, my God, this is just – I feel so upset right now. <laughs> like yeah. I just feel yeah. like so – because I saw <laughs> – there's like this painting that looks – I mean it's so beautiful. And I walked up to it and the coat was literally – like where the crease is, it's literally one, two, three. And it, but it was perfect. Yeah. It was like 
there's yeah. no rendering here. It's just a few brush strokes. And I was like, God damn. <laughs> but the cool thing was, is when I got back, that's how I finished the rest of the paintings. No. I just, I, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to yeah. just start doing that. And, and it, they, the client didn't even notice, but it saved me hours of rendering. And it really, it felt more alive to me. It felt more, you know, um, but it was, I'm so glad that that exhibit was there when it was, because it literally like seeing it in person, it made me feel like it's okay if I do that. Um, I'm not yeah. saying I did it as well as he did, but it inspired me to try, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's, it's frustrating. Like, you know, and same, same with his watercolor paintings. Um, uh, I'm very similar to you in that way where for me, um, I was always, I always started at my first years, like most of my life, it was always like drawing, just drawing and pen and ink, um, that kind of stuff. And then I started introducing watercolor into my work and I fell in love with watercolor. Like watercolor to me is such a beautiful medium. I love the, the transparency and I love that the things that some people think are accidents, but they're not like when you, you can purposely leave a brushstroke in a, in a place because you know when it dries, it's going to leave like a certain ring and you want that there, you know, because it's beautiful. Yeah. That's that's part of the aesthetic of watercolor. And I love how I was able to control it. And I just felt there's something, um, I guess it's the, the maybe the organic nature of it where it just feels like, a, like it's alive because it's moving and it's just, and uh, you got to have a paper towel with you so you can dap here and all this. It's just so much, you feel so like, um, like involved or I don't know. But the same thing though is when like I started introducing like opaque mediums, I started like playing around with acrylic and the same thing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, (laughs) something that took me forever to build up in watercolor, uh, to get like a certain, I can do it in like two minutes, you know, but it, the difference is, is it, it is a different feel, you know, because you're not really going to be able to mimic the same fuel that you can get with watercolor um, unless you're using watercolor. <laughs> yeah. um, you can kind of do it with gouache and you can kind of do it with acrylic if you thin it down. But – and that's one thing that is cool about gouache and acrylic is that you can do both, you know. But um, what I was going to say is is the Sargent thing. Um, I, I never knew that Sargent was known for his poor, his oil paintings. Like when I first was getting into painting, all I knew of Sargent for was his watercolors um, because that my dad had bought me a book about his paintings or whatever. And so I just obsessed over that book and I couldn't believe how beautiful those paintings were. And, and of course, he's doing them on location. You know, he's actually there painting like these things and you can feel the light. He was able to capture like so just yeah. Yeah. accurately. And um, I just remember like – when I, w- I went to art school for a couple of years and I remember the teacher was like saying, Hey, wh- what's your influences f- f- watercolor? And, um, I, I had said Sergeant and he, the teacher was like, like what? Like he, he was kind of like, that's, he's not a watercolor art. Like he's, you know, he, and I, but I mean, obviously he is, he's known for that. I mean, yeah. but it was just <laughs> funny because, um, when I was made aware of the fact that he's actually known for his oil paintings, and then I start, then I saw his oil paintings, I felt so stupid. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just funny because most people know him first for his oil paintings, um, but that's the first thing I think of still is Sargent because, uh, you know, he that was a huge influence on me. Like those paintings, just it, I learned so much. You know, it's funny him and Herman Mejia from Mad Magazine. Do you know oh, yeah. Who Herman? Yeah. Yeah, sure. His his watercolor work and Sargent. Those were my influences, like big time. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. They are they are amazing. I mean, yeah. uh with with Sargent it's really uh this ridiculous thing that he, you know, was able to just paint on location with, you know, oils or watercolors. Um it's I mean, th- th- his paintings are so lively. They're sh- so, you know, they they look so naturalistic. Like yeah. you're really in the scene with him, next to him, and watching what he's watching. Also, the I think uh, of the um, crocodiles that he painted a couple of mm-hmm. times. I think he revisited that uh, maybe in Florida, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and they are ridiculous. I mean, these animals are moving the whole time. So how is he able to, you know, really paint them? And, and he had to be pretty close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like that close to a fucking dinosaur. Yeah. And he's like painting them. But the thing I love about those paintings in particular is if you squint your eyes when you're looking at them, like you just kind of, you, you, like you said, you feel like you're standing there. Yeah. That's just incredible. It's so, I mean, yeah, man, it's, it's really humbling, you know, when you see it that is. kind of work, um, you know, it like, it, it's hard, I think for, you know, for someone like me, and I'm sure you relate with this, like I am always striving for the best that can be with my work. Um, and it's not always achieved and it's frustrating and everything, but I'm in this zone all the time where I'm every day I'm thinking about it and I'm working and, and, and I'm drawing and I'm painting and I'm trying to do my best. And even under crazy deadlines, like, like what I'm doing right now, I'm just trying to get the job done and still maintain a quality that I can be okay with. <laughs> like, but I got it. It's a, it's like a job. So I don't yeah. necessarily sometimes feel like I'm getting to, to really, you know, there's a difference between, I think when you, when you're doing illustration work like that and something where you're feeling like, Oh man, I just created a beautiful piece of art. Like there's, there, there's a difference because when you're in like an, like an illustration type thing, I think you try to do that. Um, but you don't always, it doesn't always happen because like the clock is ticking, you know? Um, <laughs> but like, it's, it's rare for me because that's on my mind all the time. And that's what I'm focusing on. It's rare for me to get excited or, or you know, inspired by another piece of art that I see because there's no mystery. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I've, I've pretty much been doing this since I was a kid. So I kind of know, like I can look at a painting and go, oh, I, can, I know I did that. Um, not saying I could do it like that. <laughs> I'm just saying I get it. So it's not, I'm not like, ooh, you know. But yeah. like, th I guess what I'm trying to say is there's, that's one thing I enjoy about your work because there's, you have, um, you know, there, there's, there's enough like tasty treats that you're putting in there for people like me to be like, ah, I like that. I like <laughs> that little thing that he did. Like, that is cool. Like, does that make sense? Like, yeah, it like, does. Yeah. yeah okay. And I do that on purpose, okay. especially for people like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. The colleagues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you have to, right? Yeah, Cause you, yeah. you're trying to like, you know, you, you know, that's what, that's another thing too. We live in a, in, in a, in a strange time right now where artists in the past didn't have this, where we're constantly, you know, being judged or our work. I mean, we're the ones putting it out there. We're, we're like putting like social media, you know, everyone, so everyone can see our work, but there's never been that time before where so many people just, in, I just finished this. I, and then, an hour later, 800 people have liked it or commented or whatever. It's like, that's crazy. Yeah. So you can't help but think while you're working on something that every brushstroke, people are going to notice this or see that, you know, it's different. It, before I used to just be, tr I was trying to impress my mom. So she hangs it on the refrigerator. And now it's <laughs> like everybody, you know, but I mean, it's, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it, I, you can't help but think about it while you're working on it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, and, and, and I have difficulties when when people, you know, jump to conclusion too fast, and they don't really, you know, they they haven't seen the painting in real life, and you know, they only see this small glimpse of a painting. Especially with my uh, larger works, I realize that um, that you know, when when I post them, they you know, almost look like a photograph. I, I don't blame people who just swipe through and don't realize <laughs> yeah. it's a painting. It's, you know, I can't blame them. But, uh, you know, when you see it in reality and you get up close, uh, you really see, you know, that there isn't much there. And, and just to, I try to simplify. I try to, you know, give it an, an own aesthetic and a tasteful kind of, you know, brushwork. Um, so that's really something that, you know, that that gets lost when you publish it on social media or on, on the website yeah. stuff. So that's always the thing where I, you know, struggle to 
also share some photographs of you know the process maybe or how I'm standing there uh, you know with the brush yeah. or you so show, sometimes you show, show close ups you know like you can oh yeah kind of come in yeah but um speaking of how do you um do you do you have a do you, do you photograph the work or do you have it scanned I have it done? scanned yeah oh, okay yeah, there is a company you know who's doing these large scans of of all kinds of things but they always uh, or they also do um, scans for museums. Uh, you know, they, they have already uh, these huge masterpieces framed and then they want to have it scanned for their archives or stuff. Mm. So, you know, they give it to that company and I, you know, I trust them and I give them my paintings. And yeah. is it crazy expensive to do that? Because I've, I've always wondered, Not I'm crazy, sure there's places. It is yeah. expensive. So I try to be really, you know, careful with yeah. my paintings and put yeah. the extra effort into it so that, uh, yeah, that it's worth it in the end. Yeah, I because I, I that's one thing I've always had a hard time with is getting a good copy of a, tra a traditional painting. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask you about your your approach with the acrylic. First of all, um, do you work with a certain palette, uh, preferred palette or whatever you feel like for that particular painting yeah it's, okay. it's really based on mood actually or you know what what time of the day it is uh, so <laughs> and what i want to accomplish what i want to show or what i what i'm feeling at that time and then i you know just can go crazy with the colors uh, mixing stuff together and then you know i have a, i have a certain palette and a feeling for it I, sometimes i make a test but most of the times, uh, like I said before, with watercolors, you really had to have a plan before you start. With acrylics, I just go right to the canvas and, you know, I throw some paint on it, see how it works. Uh, if it works, I still can make changes. So, you know, it's, it's a great luxury if you can stretch the whole process over a couple of days or even weeks. Um, that's for me, at least it's a really, a real luxury uh, right now. And, you know, I, I hope to, to be able to take advantage of it. No, that's awesome. And do you, um, do you like when you working, do you work with any, like a medium with your acrylics or is it just water? No, just water. Yeah. Okay. I like to have just, you know, I'm, I'm a simple guy <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm always confused if I, uh, get too much stuff, you know, next to my palette or my brushes. I, mm -hmm. I really like to keep it simple. So I have to put extra effort into the creation, you know, or, you know, spend, spend a lot more time making it work. Uh, I always like that challenge, uh, you know, keeping it simple on the palette and then putting in the extra effort. That's... And, and how do you... So I'm the same way with, like, with acrylics. I... I always just use water. That's how I, I, you know, there's, but there's people that use, um, what's that called? Uh, I'm blanking what the, there's like some medium you can mix with it. Um, man, I can't remember what it's called there, but some people have recommended it to me before and I just, I, I messed with it before, but I didn't like it cause it kind of made the paint goopy and, and kind of strange, thinned it out too much. Um, uh, but I have tried and I was wondering if you do, do, do you like, do you use like the sponge? at all um the um you just put like put paint right on a plate and just mix it that way yeah uh, i uh, you know i i squeeze uh, you know different kind of uh, colors into you know smaller bottles okay. so that i can store them like uh, for example uh, you know those um mural painters you know they are preparing their um you know their their paint uh, in in large uh, you know um, tubes and stuff so they are mixing before and then you know they can cover all the the house uh, with with the paint um, and make these large murals so that's the, the same kind of thinking when I when I step to acrylics I learned that from uh, Kruger um, he's using that as well that technique you know or at least this this method um, yeah so, so you just okay so does that mean you're like pre-mixing large amounts of one color yeah. And you just yeah. store them. Okay, that makes sense. So then yeah. I store them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and you just use straight up water. Uh, have you? Because one thing that I used to do, because I used to paint the exact same way, I would just squirt. I, I didn't make large amounts of certain colors. I just 
I've always worked with um, either a primary or like a Zorn palette. I really enjoy those kind of palettes. So I only I only would have like, you know, very limited palette. That's that's kind of how I I, I, enjoy, I just enjoy that you know what I can get from that. Um, I've tried many other colors as well, but I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the kind of painter where I'd rather um, make violet from the blue and red that I'm painting with rather than just buying a violet. Um, I just feel like it. I don't know. It, it feels like it fits better. The colors. I've always felt like it. The, the violet pops out weird or whatever. But I know a lot of people do that, and that's fine. Um, that's one nice thing about painting. You can do whatever you want, really. So, um, yeah. But I always kind of. Yeah, I kind of felt would feel overwhelmed if, if there was just way too many colors. I, like, you know, I try to keep it. Uh, I mostly focus on values when I paint anyway, so it's 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 uh, it just makes more sense to me. I can paint faster that way. But um, I'm more of like I mix the color as I'm painting, you know, like. Um, but I have seen people do that before, which is really interesting. Like, um, like uh, Jenny Seville. I don't know, you know who who that is. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. love her paintings. Yeah. yeah, I've seen her doing that same thing where she'll mix up a giant, just a huge thing of one color that she knows she's going to use, and then you know, so yeah. it's 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 kind of an interesting process. But I guess if you're working that large, it probably helps save you so much time. And of course, yeah, yeah. How do you handle the, um, the drawing the the draw well, the drying issue when it comes to acrylics? You know, meaning that how fast they dry. Um, and then also, you know, with acrylics, they tend to dry darker and sometimes it's hard to go back into an area and match it exactly because it, it, it's almost impossible sometimes to get it to match exactly because of that drying effect. How do you deal with that situation? You just kind of go with it and I, I, I think I just go with it and, uh, you know, accept the fact that at some point, you know, it, it just takes me maybe half an hour, maybe one hour to really get used to it and I, I really have my colors mixed then and I just go right in and if it dries a little darker I just mix the the color a little bit brighter um, you know it's like there is so much stuff going on um, during the process by but I always have in mind that I can make corrections anytime so when you when you build up uh, really thinly you can always uh, you know put on opaque paint later on so that's what I have in mind. That's my back plan, so so I to see. say. And yeah, so that's really I just stick I just stick to it and I commit fully and then embrace all the challenges uh, given. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know. I'm I'm just asking from just because I if I know for myself personally, there's there's certain times where I've been painting and I've done I've done tons of acrylic paintings, but like when you're in the middle of a painting and you're just like, oh. <laughs> like I, I know the feeling yeah. frustrating like i remember one painting i was doing um i had the background just perfect um and then i realized i needed to fix something like something like just was slightly off in this one area because i needed to change something else and then i couldn't no matter what i could not get it to to blend in anymore like it just wouldn't blend in it, it would the new brush strokes I was putting in, and it's just—it was just one of those things where you're like, "No, yeah, well, that's just the way it's got to be." <laughs> like I can't—it's because it was like it was all like the reason it was—it was all very dark. The background was super dark, and mm. but um, you know, it would be different I think if it was a lighter background because then I could kind of get away with it. But because everything was so soft and dark, I couldn't fix this one spot because it just kept standing out. Like every time it would dry, I'm like, you can just see it. It was just so frustrating, and I think I ended up painting something over that area, like to, to distract from it, or whatever. Yeah. But those kind of things happen, you know, like where you're just, you know. And it, it's funny every time I I work on an acrylic, I, you know, I I am having a good time and everything. But there's always like a point in the painting where I'm like, why am I painting in acrylics? <laughs> I, I I should be doing this in oils. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> and then and then I'll you know same thing. I'll be working on an oil. And I'll sometimes I'll think, um, you know, not as much now, but like there have been times where I'm like, man, this would be so much easier if I was doing this in acrylic because then I could do this. And so there's like there's always like, you know, there's the benefit in an acrylic of being able to lean on the painting and like touch it because it dries so fast. Yeah. Whereas oils yeah. like you can't really do that. And um, yeah, it's it's interesting. 
I always find it every, funny. Every medium has its uh, its benefits, you know, or disadvantages and advantages. I think so. With every medium, there is something that really sticks out for for the medium itself. So I try to focus my intention to that and don't compare it in that moment to any other medium. You know, I just stick yeah, to yeah. <laughs> benefits or try to make the disadvantages work in a way or use it to my own advantage. It's complicated. <laughs> if I talk about it, it's just, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but Are you, do you paint mostly, do you paint very thin um, when you when you work with acrylics? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Also, I, I would say mostly I, I paint really thinly in the beginning and then I, you know, add up uh, more layers and, and get thicker by the end. But uh, sometimes I just throw the paint right in and, you know, I get nice textures with it and then paint on top of it yeah. more thinly. So you can, there is so much things that you can do with acrylics. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, really, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's fun. It's, yeah. And it's really cool. Um, that's one thing I love is because I don't see very many people doing acrylic. Not very, not very many. Um, and I. Uh, for me personally, I have never, I've never really, I've only done one large acrylic. Um, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I'm talking like big, you know, like I've done, you know, acrylics that are maybe like, like this, this big, but, um, I've never done like something as large as you have, um, on a, on a canvas. So cause I've, I've, I've mostly done, um, when I paint in a, on acrylic, it's usually like linen, like very tight linen, um, and usually very small and I'm using little brushes the whole time, you know? Um, but I wonder there's, there's probably gotta be an advantage to working that large, um, as well, because, you know, like on a canvas, you're able to, um, probably render things in, get, get that softer edge easier. Cause like there's a definitely a yeah. difference between that and painting on, let's say like Masonite trying to get yeah. that same kind of soft edge might be a little bit more challenging. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking out loud just because I haven't, you know, like the piece behind you, like I haven't ever done an acrylic that big. So I'm just, um, you know, and I watch Kruger, uh, he's doing his workshop now and I see him and, uh, I just see him like, like doing like walk up to his painting and just go, doot, doot, doot. I'm like, Oh, that's <laughs> very nice and soft. And, and it's just funny because I only get that feeling usually when I work with oils. And so yeah. acrylic just seems to be, um, a, a bit of a bastard when it comes to that kind of a thing. <laughs> but does, does, that, does, that seem to be, does that seem to be a frustration when you're working or does it, you're just kind of used to it because you've been doing it a little bit more of it now? Yeah, I think I, I got used to it, but I really had my difficulties in the beginning. I really was frustrated by, like you mentioned, the drying times and, and you know, uh, when the paint dries, it gets darker sometimes, sometimes it gets lighter depending on how much water you have on your brush. So it's really kind of a mystery. But um, I I haven't done that many acrylic paintings yet. So I'm not really, you know, speaking too much from experience. It's like maybe 30 paintings or, or 25 paintings, I would say, like on, on bigger sizes, like, you know, from here to, to bigger. Um, but I really see all the advantages, um, you know, that, that I didn't have with watercolors. So I, I always compare with watercolors, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, from from ten transparent to opaque, it's just such another level. If you really commit to one thing at first and then going to the next one and, you know, it's just like so many doors open all of a sudden. So, yeah, sometimes yeah. that's maybe the, the most confusing part, uh, you know, what kind of road do I want to go with with this painting? Like I, I'm always, I, I'm probably more concerned about what kind of road I'm going than you know if there is any road at all uh, there that I can go. So it's more the the choices that I have that are sometimes you know overwhelming in a way that I get <laughs> confused. <laughs> have you ever worked with oils before? Yeah, I've done uh, two small pieces, um, and uh, I really, you know, enjoyed that you just could uh, paint things next to each other and then pick a clean brush and just blend everything together and you have these nice, uh, you know, transitions and stuff. But I realized that, at least for me, um, it's for me, it's really, really hard to, to get that same effect with acrylics. 
and I always like to, you know, embrace the challenge, especially, um, you know, on the on the larger scales right now. So I stick to acrylics because I learn and learned so much from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a really it's. I mean, but oil is another challenge, I guess. It's, yeah. It's like, so complicated. I, I, the, I mean, for me, I always I think one of the things I love about it is just that there's there's never really a an end to what you can learn. I mean, there's so yeah. many techniques and I don't really think there is a right way or wrong way. I mean, there's so many different, you know, I mean, I'll, I mean, there are some things, you know, with oil painting, for example, that really do matter. Like the, the way that you lay your brush stroke can affect everything because it, it can deflect the light. Yeah. You know, there's different things like that that you don't think about or or, uh, you know, there's so there's some definite definite things like that. Like I kind of, um, you know, I don't know. It's it's funny, like painting with acrylics for many years. And then I when I started painting with oils, my first feeling was I'm never going to paint with acrylics again just (laughs) because I felt like there was so much more I could do with oils. But then. Then you know what happens is like after a while you're like, oh man, I miss doing this one thing with acrylics. Like I miss doing like I miss doing like a real quick, um, you know, kind of like blocking out like the shapes and the form, letting it, it only takes a few minutes to dry, then doing a wash, and then seeing that you know push that back a little bit and then pulling things out. Can't really do that with oils because the the drying time and all that kind of stuff it just doesn't work. So they definitely both have serious advantages and. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting though, when you think about what, what it is, you know, I always think about that too. It's like, it's just wet plastic that, you know, it, it's, it's same yeah, thing with water. pragmatic about it. Right. At yeah. some point, like, yeah. it's, it's like just, with watercolor, it's, it's, yeah. it's just water thinning down a color and you just, you, I, I always, I always feel like excited about it. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this with this, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And especially with, with watercolors, you're really you know, you're you're working with nature, right? Like the water sometimes does things on its own or you, you can push it into a certain direction so it does certain things that you want maybe. Um, but, you know, I always get surprised when I do watercolors. It's like, it's also this never ending thing going on, like this huge journey um, still ahead. So yeah, that's really fun. I did, I, I did a painting um, years ago I did a couple. I was just just experimenting, just having fun. I did a a painting that was all done with dirt, and it was it turned <laughs> out really cool. Um, it was just I would just you know mix up like it was like just browns, and I just did the whole thing basically with water and dirt, and it wow. on watercolor paper, you know, um, and it looked really cool. And I was just like, wow, I did a painting with dirt, and it just do it, you have a photo of that one? Uh, I have to look. It was I, it was one that I put on my blog probably a long time ago. Wow. Okay. And, and then I did another one, a really crappy painting. Uh, it was terrible. I, I did a Jack Nicholson like a long like, like gosh, I, maybe eight, seventeen, eighteen years ago or so, and I painted it with coffee. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've seen like, I've seen people using coffee or barbecue sauce yeah, or like, ketchup or whatever. I don't know what I was just like. I, I was just feeling artsy, you know, like let's do a painting and in, in yeah. coffee, and destroy all these? my brushes. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, have, but it have worked. Have seen these paintings of uh, you know that that people do sometimes by cleaning the back window of a of a car, and they clean the the window and. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you know, before it's really put in dirt and stuff, it's really messy. And then they just uh, clean the, the window and all of a sudden the painting or, you know, whatever they are doing, the face appears and stuff. So it's really like people do this, actually. It's really fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend that um, he he uh, I think he got, actually got hired by a, a, a some kind of beer company, but he was he was doing portraits with painting with beer you know and he was like literally just painting watercolor technique but using beer um and painting portraits and i this company like hired him to do a bunch and so i mean it's it's really cool it's again coming full circle to john lennon um 
I'm, I, I'm not really, I'm not 100 on the exact quote, but it's something like, you know, I don't know how to play a tuba, but but give me a tuba and I'll make art, I'll make art with it, you know. Right. Um, that's really not exactly how he said it, obviously. <laughs> but the point is, is um, I think that's one thing that's interesting and beautiful about being an artist is just being able to take a medium and and play with it. Like I like I'm not very familiar with pastels. I haven't really played with them very much, but I know if I got some paper and pastels, I could do something kind of cool, you know, you, you, because I understand like certain aesthetics uh, in rules that I know work for me, you know, excuse me, but that's, what's inter interesting about it. And so it's been really cool to watch you throughout the years of, with your water. Cause, cause your, your watercolor works awesome. Oh, One thanks. thing I always really enjoy about your watercolor work is you, you do, there, there, there's like something that you do where, um, it almost makes it like, almost makes it look like the character is just coming out out of the paper like because you do a lot of like thin almost fadeaways in certain areas but it has like this really interesting look where it almost looks like the color and the character and stuff is just coming out of the paper you know and that other stuff's like in the distance a little bit it's 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 a really cool feel um and then it was interesting watching your transition from that to um acrylics because you still have that same voice like you can still see you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but – and that's what I mean by the aesthetics of it is like you're able to still have your voice. Like it still feels like you are the artist behind it, you know. Um, one of my first – one of the first pieces you did that – I like I think I think it was the Joker painting where he's, he's hanging outside the car. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a fun painting. Yeah, and it was it's really cool because it's like – I've seen a lot of people do that paint that um and but again your taste the way that you paint this is what that person doesn't understand that got all uh butt hurt about the john lennon painting and saying you know why why paint that it's already a photograph it's like god I'm such an <laughs> idiot but like the troll yeah but it's like you did it you know and you yeah. have like this aesthetic and you have this this way of interpreting that painting or that photo in in a way or that scene or whatever it is, but it still feels like you. And that's what's really cool, I think, when, when you can see an artist do that from medium to medium um, is really fun. That's why I asked if you if you did anything with oils because I'd be curious to see how you uh, handle that as well because I'm sure you would just pop right out there, you know. Here, here I am doing awesome oil paintings now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, the oils are, you know, another challenge that I want to yeah. try again uh, some at some point in the future, really, you know, taking it more seriously and, you know, working that out with turpentine and, and all the things that you need for it to clean the brushes and stuff. And I don't know, yeah, right now I'm really comfortable with water-based medium, you know, it's really <laughs> like that's my home <laughs> somehow. Yeah, I asked uh, my, my friend Grigor, um, uh, Last time I had him on my podcast, I asked a, someone a fan question was, "What, what's something you hate about oil painting?" And he was just like thinking about it. He goes, "I think he's like, oh, cleaning up. Like that's, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> like that's the worst part is the cleaning up part. Yeah, probably um, takes the longest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't have to do that when you work digitally. You don't have to do that. You just oh yeah, like, just <laughs> pa pa pause. You know." <laughs> It is funny though, because um, I've done that when I paint traditionally, where I'll be working on something, and there's been several times where I'm like, you know, undo, undo, <laughs> like in my mind, like, oh, you know, <laughs> doesn't work that way. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Well, actually, you know, actually, what I wanted to, to ask you about real quick was, so the the um, Maryland piece and the the John Lennon piece are those. Those are part of the same series. Is is the point yeah. of it, like the last moments or something like that? That's that's yeah. kind of the point behind it. Um, yeah, I called it moments before. Moments so before. Okay. Really yeah. Like this. Yeah, that's the frame for the series. And what? I mean, I'm just curious behind. Like, what what made you 
decide to go in that direction with it. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, it's it's again, people are gonna no matter what you do, there's gonna be people that are gonna be like, I don't like that you painted chickens and eggs in the same painting. That's so disturbing, you know. Jump off a cliff, save us all. Um, but uh, what was what was the choice behind that idea? I just um, it's a really cool idea. Oh yeah, the you know the idea really developed uh, by painting the Marilyn piece first. Uh, which was the the first you know bigger piece uh, with acrylics and and the limited kind of palette and value range I had, um, and then after that I like I said I, I stumbled upon these uh, photos by of of John Lennon, and actually with with that one of one of the pictures I've seen like with that I somehow got the idea to you know search for more pictures of more icons that I have you know painted in the past but only like doing a portrait and whatever but you know i wanted to have this some of this unity uh, with within these paintings and and have these this dialogue um, yeah. and i just could you know uh, i've i've just envisioned it in my in my um in my mind's eye that this could be a whole series that i really put all my effort into and yeah and and painting all these you know great figures uh, on this large scale and then we see how that will go in the end. I mean, I would love to to make you know a, an exhibition with this, but it's still in the process, though. So I can't really you know tell anything right now. Um, yeah. Nothing is planned. Uh, you know, just finishing the series and then and then moving on. Yeah, seeing what what I do with it. You do a portrait of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, sitting at the in the movies in the not the movie theater but the, <laughs> the I wish I had a photo of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so dark. Um, no, but <laughs> there is something interesting about that the movie theater. Uh, what do you call it? The theater theater, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, but that that's the very that's the reason why I painted Saddam Hussein. Um, I did an oil painting of him years ago, and it's interesting. I got a lot of crap for it from people. Like how why how in the world could you paint Saddam Hussein, you know? And then I've got a really good buddy of mine. Uh, J his name is Jason as well, and he lives here in the Chicago area. And um, he's a real big fan of art and everything. He enjoys my work. And um, as a gift, one I had so the Saddam painting that I did, I did it with it's just raw umber and white uh, oil. And I and then I had it. I actually had it framed. I, um, I it got accepted into the Society of Illustrators show. In New York, and I got it framed in. And I, when I was, when I brought it to get framed, uh, the the guy working there was like, "Oh man, I've got this um, really beautiful um, Iraq, Iraqi. I can't remember what it was. It was like an olive something wood frame, or it was some kind of frame that he actually had from Iraq." And I thought, oh, let me see that. Let me just – I mean that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. And he brings it out and it was just beautiful. It just was perfect and it was like really cool. And he's like, yeah, I, I just literally got a bunch of these from Iraq. Like they're just – it's like this beautiful wood. Um, and it was just perfect. It matched the painting. It was like, oh, this is awesome. And so uh, the painting looked great. Like the frame really w was really nice. Had it in the show. And then – when I came back from the show, for years, I just had this painting of Saddam Hussein just like hanging in my studio all the time. And occasionally people would come over like, why the heck do you have that? You know, I was like, I painted it, you know. Um, and his eyes kind of follow you like when you walk around, like it's really weird. But um, then my friend Jason, as a gift one day, I, I gave it to him and his wife, um, the painting. And uh, wow. he was like, was very excited about it. But the great thing is they have it hanging in their kitchen. Um, so, so like when pe all these people come over and they like to entertain, they have a bu bunch of people over their house parties and stuff and they have live bands come play and different things and all these people coming, walking through their, their, their house and there's Saddam Hussein just hanging there in the kitchen. Oh, wrong choice of words. <laughs> hanging yeah. in the kitchen. Oh man. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just hanging there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so fucked up. Um, but it's just funny because people are always like, why do you have Saddam hanging in your kitchen? You know, but the, the truth of it is, is the reason I chose to do that is kind of similar to what you're, you're saying. So I can totally relate with it is I happen to be uh, one day 
uh, something popped up in the news. On the, I don't know if it was on the internet or what it was, but it was a picture of Saddam in court the moment he was told that he was going to hang. Yeah, I remember and, the painting you did. Yeah, yeah, and he he was very upset by this because he wanted he he wanted a, a soldier's death, an honorable soldier's death, which was. Yeah being shot. That's what, that's what he wanted. And they refused that to him. They're like, no, you're going to be hung because, uh, you're being punished and whatever. So, um, it's pretty brutal, but the moment when you look at his face, the moment he was told he was going to hang, it's really powerful. It's intriguing, right? Yeah. yeah, You can see it in this guy's face. And so it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that that I I'm not a supporter of Saddam or I'm not this or that. It's it's like this weird human moment that I was intrigued yeah. by, exactly and curious, and I wanted to capture that feeling because it yeah. it's a powerful feeling, you know. Absolutely. And it's really weird to have to try to explain that to people, but you know I've talked about this before with um, I think I I think I brought this up when I was talking with my brother because um, my brother. He does taxidermy and stuff and um, for fun, and he's, like, really good at it. But I had told him, like, it's interesting because I kind of, I always kind of feel like um, artists are, like, this close to, to being a serial killer in a way. <laughs> like, but painting keeps us away from that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we have, like – because I, whenever I see, like, really good shows about serial killers, I'm like, man, this guy was an artist. He was so – he was like – I can, I can relate so much. Put put away the rape and the murder. I don't want anything to do with that. But other than that, this guy was calculated. He had aesthetics. He He's like the way he was thinking about things. I'm like, this dude is an artist. He just went too far. He took it too far. But I think like we as artists are kind of on that same wavelength a lot of times. Like we think weird things. Like we, we want to see – the roadkill and because that might make it you know yeah that's really sad that that animal was hit by the car but wow look at how beautiful that looks with the lighting yeah. that would be a great painting and then people yeah. think we're messed up but it's like no you don't understand that's beautiful yeah you know yeah. and in, in its like, own fucked up way in the, in the sense like exactly yeah. and people yeah. people don't understand that even though that was a horrible thing with, with saddam there's still beauty in that you know, and even if it's a dark beauty, and there's something that I just felt like capturing, like, um, you know, it's it's like someone that decides to write a, a poem about something that's fucked up, but yeah. it's still beautiful, and yeah. and I think that's what's awesome about art. I think that I think that that has been there forever, right? In the whole yeah. art history, literature, I mean, all the Stephen King novels are not really, you know, they're not fairy tales. I mean, <laughs> people you know, are really intrigued by that and they get into this own universe that he's creating. So I think when it comes to painting there, you know, there is so much, so much room for that as well. And there has always been, I mean, all the, the paintings that there has been in, uh, from the church and stuff, you know, all these paintings of Jesus, uh, you know, dying on the cross and stuff, uh, they show tragedy, they show uh, and, and, it's you know it's it's always been there and uh, we, we need to embrace it I think yeah no I I 100 agree with you um, like like um what's that oh man I'm, I'm blanking again on another artist's name but um there's a f oh, there's a painting of Medusa's I think Medusa's head or something oh, like that yeah uh, um, is it um, uh, I, I try to think of the name. An Italian. Um, yeah, art, I saw right? I saw it when I was in uh, in um, Florence or Flor yeah in Florence. Yep. Um, anyways, but like it's just it's amazing when you see like a painting like that too. Just like it's horrific, but it's also it's it's there's something so beautiful about it. Yeah, you know. But it's I mean, disturbingly beings, beautiful. But <laughs> but human beings. I mean, think about this. When you you know you bring up the paintings of Jesus and stuff, human beings are attracted to morbid things because yeah. you know whether or not you want to believe in any of that stuff crucifixion was a real thing you know they they literally beat people to to death 
yeah. and then hung them uh, publicly on display. I mean, it's so barbaric and messed up. It is. Yeah. There's nothing beautiful or good about it at all. Oh. Yet oh. all these people walk around wearing crucified Jesus is on their neck or you go into a church and there's like this guy it's like could you imagine if Jesus was instead um you know like like the end of Braveheart he got his intestines pulled out what, what are you going to wear this necklace with a guy with his intestines coming out you're going to wear that around your neck you're going to have that hanging in your church instead like a guy laying on his back and all these like sausages being pulled out of his stomach you know it's barbaric and it's weird yeah. but yet but like for example that whole thing about where the you know you know, this Jesus thing is like people find, I think, part of the reason why they're seduced by that idea is because people are kind of attracted to uh, things like that. You know, because the, the sacrifice kind of pulls them in like, oh, it actually means something because there was this sacrifice, right? Yeah. But like I think in art, though, people can relate to things like that because they're either terrified of it or – they're um, excited by it. You know what I mean? There, there's something that moves them. It's like I was just talking with my, my wife the other day. Like, I read this statistic that the number one viewers of true crime murder mystery shows and rape mystery shows are women. Number one viewers. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and it's like – and they're the ones that are always the victims you know, in these things. Yeah. But yet – they're the ones that watch these this stuff like more than men do, you know. Um, I just found that interesting. Like, why is it That's that really interesting? That, yeah, yeah. Like, why is that? Um, but like, it's just funny though because you know, with art, I think, I think that's what's beautiful. Going back to what I was saying is like, there's there's something beautiful about being able to take something tragic or um, dark, and just because you're painting it doesn't mean I'm that glorifying it, right? No, no, exactly. Oh. Like, like I. So I did, like what I mentioned earlier about Hitler. Like, um, I did a painting of Hitler, like a like a digital sketch type painting. Uh, it, it hasn't been pulled from Facebook. Um, it it has the swastika on his arm. It's and it's. It, I tried to capture this. You know the darkness that I feel. Like in his his expression, it's even though it's slightly caricatured, um, it's not. There's no glorifying. It's just okay. capturing this person that existed. Right. And it's like, well, why would you want to do that? And this and that. And it's like, listen, it's just you're not understanding art at all. You know, Kruger did this amazing painting of Hitler sucking his thumb. It was just awesome. What he's it's not amazing. He's, He's not supposed I to do that. I see that in person, and it's it's ridiculous. If you stand in front of it, I mean, yeah. the mood, uh, the atmosphere, and also the you know this joke. And yeah. he once said in an, in an interview that uh, you know when he painted it, uh, he actually didn't know that um, Hitler was uh, really sucking on his thumb for a longer period of time as a child than other <laughs> children. And an historian came to the museum and told them, you know that. That he knows that, and um, you know, so it's really some some weird thing happening there. That you know, Sebastian didn't know that when he painted it, but in the end, it, it was true. So like uh, that that <laughs> that painting is amazing. It, it really it, is but, amazing. But it, again, though, it's like what he's not supposed to like. It's wrong for him to have painted Hitler. Like, you know, and the yeah. reason I bring it up is I've got a friend of mine who got blocked from Facebook and from Instagram and everything for doing a painting of Hitler, basically saying it was like hate speech or it was like whatever. And it's like, dude, it's like, you know, it's just interesting how, how this misunderstanding of art, you know, uh, you know, you can't, you know, you can, you can show a painting, for example, of something horrific, like, let's say, uh, let's just say like you could do like a – like my friend Tyler Jacobson does these amazing paintings for for world uh, magic and Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. Like let's say you can do a painting of someone getting impaled or a, an animal ripping someone's throat out or something like some crazy gruesome thing and it's – everyone's just like that's awesome. But you can't do a beautiful painting of a woman showing her nipple. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like geez. <laughs> one thing is beautiful and one thing is horrific. But yeah. Yeah, okay, you know. So <laughs> it's I mean art obviously is subjective. We all know that. It but is. like but 
it's just amazing to me how th- things like I'm still I'm still shocked is what I'm trying to say. I'm still shocked like the fact that I like when I shared your painting of John Lennon I shared it to promote that I was going to talk with you. That was the you know I like the painting. It's a great painting. I had no idea that people were going to react the way that they did. I actually had to to delete a few comments cuz people a few people said some crazy things and I'm like now nah, you're gone. Like you're like like you know, someone said like, "What's wrong with this artist? He's how does he not have a a heart?" And you know, going on and on about how evil you were for doing the painting. I'm like, "Oh my god, you just get out of here!" <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like just go. Like you're, you're, yeah. it's toxic. But you know, on another Even hand, illusion, right? Yeah. Too but on, but on another hand, though, yeah, art. It's it's good that it's it, it's. I'm glad that it moves people that way. You know what I mean? I'm glad yeah, that you're painting. Evoke- Emotion, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole point of it. And that's why the painting is a beautiful painting. You you did you did the right thing. It's just there's there's knuckleheads that, that, that don't <laughs> get. It. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my gosh. Well, speaking of being offended and 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 walking on eggshells, there's a lot of people that, that did drawings of you uh, oh, really? that I would like to show you, and um, we'll see what you think about them. I'm excited. Does that, yeah. Does that sound good? All right. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me switch this over. Let me know if you see this. Do you see it? Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I like the, the graphic approach. Yeah, That's it's nice. Really nice. This That's is by cool. Walid Shihab. Walid Shihab? Yep. Wow, you did a great job. Thanks Thanks for that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I like my cap. <laughs> yeah. And this is a nice one. This is by uh, Thais uh, Wessels. I, yeah, Thais Wessels. I know him. Thais, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's know, a thank great you. one, Thais. Thanks. <laughs> so, I, like I know this. that name as well. I'm kind of blanking. Um, I see so many names. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is really beautiful. I love it. I think it's watercolor. Yeah. Black and white nice. watercolor. Yeah. That's great. Great one. Other water. This is by um, Jacques Lemony. <laughs> wow, that's a nice one as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, what? that's one thing I like too. Is I love when um, I have artists on here that inspire. Uh, you know, because I always ask fans to submit work. You know, and um, Jacques is an is an awesome artist. He does a lot of really. I really love his his uh, pencil drawings. Really nice line work and and. Um, but it's really cool to to see him like trying out this, you know. It's really yeah, it's, it's awesome. Great. That's me for yeah. sure. Yeah, he got you. It's awesome. <laughs> Here you go. This is Anthony Lewis that did this one. Oh, great! Thanks, Tony. That's a great one. You know, I know is... him from Facebook. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. take this the wrong way, uh, anybody. But. Guy. Yeah. Th- th- to me, this almost looks like Tiger Woods a little bit. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Kind of, you know. There's, so- there's something <laughs> about the. Me. So, yeah. <laughs> there's something about me that also resembles Tiger Woods. That's really <laughs> yeah. something I have to think about, I guess. <laughs> are, you good at, are you good at golf? Is no, it... no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Never, or at least I've never tried it. I don't know. <laughs> probably. You're probably really good at it. <laughs> oh, uh, but it looks great. Here's a cool wow. one. This is by Jonathan Groot. Very cool. It's interesting cool. Uh, choice of the color combination. Either he ran out of green yeah. and had to use red or he's or trying he to make a statement. To, yeah, <laughs> or he just wanted to pop that ear out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Van Gogh uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Great. I love right. what he did with the mouth. It's great. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, squished. It's yeah. Really nicely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a great one. Here you go. This is oh. by Sal Navarro. Wow. That's some nice lighting as well. He really captured those, uh, you know, those mid-tones in the, in the shadow area yeah. uh, under, my, under my cap. That's great. Yeah. And when you, and when you look Flat. at these, just try to keep in mind 
like two degrees away from being a serial killer. Just oh yeah, just <laughs> barely <laughs> <laughs> on the edge. Yeah. Oh, the, um, the Lorenzorian. Yeah, the Lorenzorian. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is by Juan Gastelum. That's a real funny one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also also uh, nicely uh, nicely drawn. Uh, I like the lines and the, the flow. That's great. A great one. Very cool. Yeah. I love oh. this one. Yeah. This is <laughs> awesome. This is by Dominic Zeilinger. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yes, I like the I love the, the flow with the neck. I like the back of the head that nice yeah. and curve and tuck in. And then the throat is just like so angular. It's so yeah. kind of violent. It's, it's nicely simplified. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's really cool, man. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is by Thierry oh. Cocolette. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Thierry is, you know, one of my one of my favorites. Uh, he's so, so amazing. Wow, this piece is, this is great. Yeah, he's really awesome, man. He's, he's kicking asses with uh, digital. <laughs> he oh, yeah. really does. I mean... That's ridiculous. Yeah, I like I I love seeing his his transition from his wow. traditional stuff to the digital. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's so like it's natural to him. Like there is no I, I can't really see a difference between, you know, his digital uh, stuff and his uh, traditional. It's it's uh, flawless. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so me. Uh it's fun. <laughs> it's, you know, it's dynamic. It has all the right elements, or at least the elements that I uh, really, really appreciate. Um, wow, that's that's amazing. Well, like the transition for that's him, scary. I think, works because you know his his focus is obviously likeness, but also uh, the anatomy, you know, and the structure. Yeah. So, like, he's really he's really strong with his structure. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Amazing. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is by uh, Graziano Di Carlo. That's great. <laughs> Another great one, yeah. <laughs> you you I'm actually making advertisement for that cap company? I realized. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking before. Italy, <laughs> Italy. Um, it's interesting. You actually look very similar in this one to. A, a friend I, a friend of mine from Poland. It's very similar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting actually. I just realized it when I saw it. I'm like, wow, that's I mean, I can still see you in this one, but like I also can it's just it's that's a weird it's something about the the space between the nose and the mouth. And uh yeah. it's it's it I don't know. It's very strange. I'm gonna have to send it to him actually. Say, doesn't this kind of look like you? <laughs> you should. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> This is by Lars Eric Robinson. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it was getting cold in Germany these past uh, days, so I took that photo of me, uh, you know, wearing the coat. Uh, almost like Kenny from South Park, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but it's a great, a great execution. Yeah. I really like it. Thanks, Lars. And, uh, this one is by Christine Varadi. Oh. Um, yeah, really cool. She did this on the iPad. And I'm so happy she, oh. like, it was so weird. I apologize, Christine, for all the troubles, but she sent it, and it was like, it came to me only at one inch, and it was so small, like, it looked really, <laughs> really bad. And so I wanted to be able to make sure that we could see her work. Um, and then she sent it over and over again, and it kept coming back, it kept coming to me as like, a small little file. So finally it worked. So we're able to actually see it. So it's so, but really, anyways, really nice work. Yeah. yeah I'm glad we Strong can see colors, it. Strong colors, Christine. I really like it. Yeah. Also what you did with the cap and, you know, transitioning it to the, into the background. That's really nice. Also my shirt and stuff. That's really, that's always fun, fun to look at and fun to create, I guess. Yeah. Really nice one. Yeah. Strong colors as well. Interesting color combinations right there, but she made it work. I think. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody, so much. Um, 
Hold on a second. Am I back? Yeah, I think you're I'm back. back. All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for sending the art. That's awesome. Um, and uh, so how did that make you feel? Do you feel good now? You feel? I feel pretty, yeah, <laughs> humbled. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, Each of them got really my nose. That's really yeah. one. <laughs> that's always that's a awesome. fun fun shape uh, to draw or to see, you know, interpret it. Really, really <laughs> nice. Thanks everyone for, you know, doing such a, such a great work with, with uh, my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Hey, before we, uh, before we end this whole shebang, uh, is there anything um, going on or coming up that you want to let people know about or just send them to your socials and that sort of a thing? Yeah, I have nothing really specific going on right now, except, you know, for painting these larger uh, pieces for the series moments before. And then I'm also doing some, you know, smaller commissions, uh, especially now in the winter days. Uh, I really like to get myself into private commissions and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm looking forward. And then that's it, actually. What What about you? <laughs> I'm just working, man. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I've actually been working on a movie poster that I'm really excited or about. Burn, right? Yeah. Yep. I've and um, yeah. I, uh, it's it's kind of funny because I'm actually going to have him on the podcast in a couple weeks, and we're going to talk about it. But like, you know, he he had, his movie just came out, and uh, everyone should go watch it. It's called The Opening Act. Um, and if you're a fan of comedy, you're going to love it. It's got tons of amazing comics in it uh and steve is the one who got me into doing stand-up comedy myself really oh. he's the one that encouraged me and he invited me to open for him last year in chicago and i did um, a few shows with him in chicago uh for my, for my first time ever doing stand-up and it was really awesome but scary oh. um <laughs> but so when when he, he had his first movie came out and it's produced by vince vaughn and he wrote it and directed it uh steve did and uh he the poster came out and he, he thought, you know, it was a cool poster, but there's so many amazing comics in the in the movie that he really was hoping to, to kind of show more of them um, in the poster just because it's it's fun. Right? It's supposed to be a fun movie. Yeah. And so he came to me. And so but only a couple weeks before the movie came out. And so it, it movie came out almost a week ago and I'm almost finished with this poster. Uh, but. I came up with really rough ideas as quick as possible. And it's one of those things where he's like, yeah, that's great. But then, oh, but can we add this person? And then can we add this person? How about this person? Oh, we got to definitely add this person because there's so-and-so so in this. You can't and so, leave anyone out, right? Dude, so there's yeah. literally 17 people on the on this movie poster. Wow. Uh, that I'm trying – and I'm trying to like fit them all in. So – and and but you know as an – you know what it's like we're – Every single reference is coming from different lighting and different because it's all I'm I'm painting the characters all from specific scenes in the movie, but they're all coming from different lighting and everything. So it's like some of it you can't help. You just got to try to like fake it. Um, but it, that's been a huge challenge and trying to get those all done as quick as possible. So I'm like eighty percent done with it. So wow, okay. it's very close. Um, yeah. And then I have to paint, and then the background of the painting is a brick wall, so I got to paint all that still. <laughs> but uh, it's it's coming together. But that's basically what I've been trying to get done. Um, um, and then I got bit by a dog, so we come full circle, folks. Full yeah, circle, yeah. always. Uh, well, fingers crossed <laughs> for the you know comp completion of that uh, movie poster, and hope yeah. you're getting better um, from that dog bit. Yeah, um, you know you know what's funny about it. It's not funny actually. Um, mm. it's one of those things where sometimes in life, and this, I was going to, this is a good transition to, to be ending this because I wanted to ask you real quick, um, about this, but you know, we're all going through a lot of crap right now, you know, especially, I mean, everyone in the world is, but you know, right now in the United States, the whole world's looking at us, the, the election is insane. Uh, people are going insane. There's so much craziness that's been going on. And then, you know, w when this when this happened, when the when I got bit by the dog and everything, it was one of those days where I have two younger babies. I got a three year old and a four month old, and they just had shots the day before, you know, at their doctor's appointment, and they said there's a possibility they could both get fevers and stuff because of the shots. So 
my wife and I are super stressed because both of them had fevers. Um, my three-year-old had a really high fever. Um, so we're, we're stressed out about that. Then my 13-year-old daughter, her room <laughs> – this is like crazy. Her room is underneath our kitchen sink that for some reason sewage started coming up our kitchen sink. And it was nasty. And it started oh, seeping no. through the ceiling. And all of a sudden her ceiling is starting to fall through and it's dripping on her. So all that stuff's <laughs> happening. I go out to take the garbage out. I come in and then I get bit in the arm. Oh, and I'm like – and then on top of that, I'm already stressed out about this deadline. So anyways, why am I sharing all this? Because I'm human. And this is what this is what it's like we like and, and and here's here's another thing. So I get I get bit by the dog. I go in, they, they give they give you an antibiotic so that you, you this is so you don't get an infection because uh, an animal saliva has gone into your bloodstream. Um so take this, you're gonna take this twice a day for a week. It should be you're gonna be okay, but you're probably going to have extreme diarrhea because of this antibiotic. So here's another thing, a probiotic that you have to take so that it'll stop you from having the, the diarrhea. But you're probably going to feel like crap. You're probably going to be tired. Um, and uh, have a good week. <laughs> wow. It's so like it's one all of those things. Everything oh is like oh – and it's God. just like, you know. But that – and again, why did I bring it up? Because this is, you know, I think it's it's good to just – share reality every once in a while people can relate to one another you know yeah. and i try to just be as positive as possible it's not always easy you know it's life is hard man and and, and again you uh with and this is what i wanted to, to ask you before we end this thing with everything going on with you how has it been for you in in germany you're still in germany right is that where you live yeah okay yeah exactly and how has it been there um throughout all this stuff for you and and then with your art and everything because you had said briefly that yeah you know it kind of was hard for you to get back into painting again so i'm just curious before we end this um we'll try to end on a positive note but i'm just curious because i have to ask you that before we go can add something you know positive to that but um <laughs> it's re it's been really really crazy crazy months i guess um but it's it's more like uh you know as painters we are used to uh, paint in our you know comfort zone and stuff and mm -hmm. we make ourselves crazy so that the works that we produce are going to make sense in a way or work out in the end and sometimes it's you know really stressful when you know things are going on outside that you can't really deal with in a way mm -hmm. so yeah. it's like this extra pressure um and I really had difficulties with that in the first, you know, few weeks or even months um, after the corona outbreak. Um, it's really, you know, it put some pressure uh, on it, um, you know, that I had difficulties to deal with. I couldn't really make sense out of it. I listened probably too much and it really was difficult, difficult with that. Right now, the, you know, the corona um, numbers have increased in Germany. We have like 11,000 um, cases in one day. That's uh, pretty, you know, that's pretty much. Um, and, yeah. you know, it, it really seems like there is some second wave going on. Um, yeah. So all we can do is, you know, stay inside. And um, I'm really fortunate. I I've always feel, you know, silly uh, if I complain because I'm in this privileged uh, position to work from home. I'm working from my studio. So, and especially in the winter times, I always feel I'm like, I'm more creative in a way. So I try to really, you know, get back on track right now and make sense out of that for me at least, and combine it with painting in a way. I mean, that's all I can do. In the end, it's, yeah. uh, it's all about, you know, painting and getting on <laughs> with life. <laughs> yeah. how, how did you deal with, with all of this? I mean, in well, America, I even more crazy, I guess, um, with the elections coming and stuff. Yeah, it's, if it, it, dude, it's just what a, it, I mean. I, I'm in the same boat as you. Like it's, it's, you know, early on, I found it really difficult to. I was having a hard time sleeping just because yeah. there's so much crazy stuff going on, and my wife was pregnant at the time, and so there's you're, you're, there's added stress already. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's it, you know it's no bueno, man. Like even right now, like in Chicago, the cases are going up again. Um, so it's it sucks, man. You know, um, I don't know, but you know it. Like I said, like I think you 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 can kind of. Um, I guess you can kind of just be a, a, a victim or are you just going to kind of surrender and, and give in, or you can just realize, Hey, I'm being punched at right now yeah. and I can, I can duck and I can block and I can strike back with positivity or I can, you know, try to, you know, you know, for me, it's just like, I'm just trying to be the best dad I can be um, uh, and take care of everything as much as possible. And, you know, I feel like, if I'm being honest, I feel like I have a lot of I feel like I have a lot of stress and pressure on me personally because I'm take you know financially I got to take care of the whole family and all that kind of stuff. So there is a lot of that, but like I kind of feel like give it to me so that they can all chill out, you know. Yeah, but, you're pro protecting the rest in a way. Yeah, but um, That's but I see it. But then in the meantime, then I you know I can hang out with with a glass of bourbon and a and somehow things are, you know, you ever find yourself just thinking <laughs> about boobs? <laughs> you know, I like, don't answer I, that. <laughs> like, like I was thinking the other day, what if boobs were a lot more like penises? Oh, my God. You now know, you're putting me on the spot. Like, what if, <laughs> like, think about it. Think about it. Like, like, what if, you know, they were just deflated bags of flesh? Only inflating to full potential when they're turned on. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you think it's weird, but you know this whole Thanks situation down pitch. here is weird. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like there could be some benefits. Like if you're going, if you're on a first date, and you don't know if it's going well or not, after a couple drinks and a good conversation, you start noticing that your date is starting to fill out or dress a little bit, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, good job, buddy. Let's get a couple more drinks." But hanging yeah. out with mom would be a little weird. <laughs> you know, you look over at your mom and you're like, "Great, someone's excited about this episode of." <laughs> you're ending with a weird image in mind. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> you look over at your mom and you're like, "Whew, someone's a little excited about this episode of Property Brothers." <laughs> and that is how we end on a positive note. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, man, it's been a pleasure uh, hanging out with you, man, and, and talking with you. And um, right. and uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. I love your work. I can't wait till we can hang out in person again sometime. Um, and, uh, dude, be safe. And, and I cannot wait to see what, you, uh, what you're working on. Um, Likewise. Likewise. And, yeah, uh, everybody follow Marvin's um, Instagram. Which, which What's your Instagram again? Marvin, you know, this uh, below minus and then. Oh, yeah. Lawrence Un after name, yeah. Marvin after underscore name. Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, follow him. His work's amazing. Check out his work on his website. And everyone else, have an amazing week. We'll see you next week uh, with uh, stand-up comedian uh, Jessica Kirsten. She is one of the best in the world. Um, and her latest special was produced by Bill Burr, who is one of my favorite comics. So I'm super excited to talk with her. And if you don't know what to do, just think about boobs, all right? It's a, it's a weird world, so get weird with it. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Wow, <laughs> you don't, you don't know what to do with, you don't know what to do with that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so amazing, man. <laughs> you want answers? truth.